Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Uh, we've had a hot couple days. Uh, temperatures in excess of over like 100 degrees, especially on my porch and whatnot. And so I haven't been down the basement. You know, the good part about being retired is you do what you feel like. You know, you don't have any uh, any uh, work that has to be done. So, but uh, I want to bring up something. A good friend of the show by the name of James Dorn. You remember these trees behind me? I had to cut them down. Uh, last year I had to cut down a couple and, and trim the one side and I'll show you now here. maybe you remember me mentioning uh, this oak tree that uh, actually was a little sapling I let it grow I was cleaning out the garden I let and that's up uh, 40 something years ago it's uh it's about half of its you know half life they last about a hundred years sometimes more but it's a beautiful example however I had to cut all the branches all my neighbors now, the problem. problem with oak trees after 40 years or so they start getting acorns and they start dropping from a huge height and you can see I had to cut off the whole half of the tree and it made me sick and I know James you know uh, it was every time I looked at it, it made me sick to my stomach however there is some good news See here that the branches are starting to branch out again and come back this tree will balance its itself out once again because it's only uh, half of its age so it's a young tree more or less and so uh, another 15 years this will be back to the way it was. My little buddies they like to come and about this time every night we usually watch the uh, the lightning bugs start to come out. There's Kenji the Wonder Cat and there's a couple of them on these. Remember I was telling you about these weeds I like so much? There was a lightning bug right there. Uh, they like to hang. These are almost six feet high already so I can't wait to see what they blossom out as as far as they know. A few videos ago I touched on something about microscopes. A couple people emailed me, was asking me uh, some questions about microscopes. I thought I would go over it real quick just in case you want to pick one up. You know, I don't want you making a mistake that a lot of people do in buying the one that's not right for you. So uh, this actual microscope that we're going to be using today is uh, one of my first uh, dissecting type microscopes. And let me show you what I mean by that. Now back in 1560, a man by the name of Zacharias Jansen was one of the first credited to invent the microscope. But if you're like me, these old Gilbert microscopes are pretty much what you grew up with and remember. Uh, they would come with a set of slides and uh, we could, you know, see all different things. But uh, today there are so many different types of microscopes that you can buy and uh, some of them are inexpensive like these USB microscopes. You also have the digital microscopes. And, uh, you know, going up in price here we have a dissecting microscope, the type I like. Uh, other, we have lab microscopes that are higher powered and then of course we have electron microscopes and the ion microscopes which is uh, for what they use in laboratories and such but the ones I like to use are these what they call dissecting microscopes and these things are great for viewing all different things like insects uh, you can get a good view of them uh, you can get minerals uh, you can look at coins you could work on circuit boards uh, basically they only go up to about a hundred power or so now, when the weather gets like this or you're shut in or something, this is a great way to spend a lot of time. And you can really see how things are formulated or, or made. And you can see here on the base plate here, you have a, a glass plate. You can put your specimen on. But we're going to be putting a piece of white um, cardboard down and then using the light from the outside to look at what we're going to be looking at. Now, some of the things I really like to study are common insects like this housefly found on a windowsill. Uh, you can spend hours just looking at different parts of this bug and you can look at the uh, the wing structure and, and the hairs that are coming out of it and how the the uh, wing uh, veins flow. It's just an amazing creature. So I saw my cat playing with something uh, before and look at what it is. The first one of the season, a beautiful, absolutely beautiful cicada. Looks like one of his front legs might be damaged a little bit, but he might be able to, and his wings have a slight damage to it, but maybe he can uh, still do what he's here for, which is uh, made up with another cicada and start the cycle all over again. So we'll see what happens. I'll put him on a tree or somewhere safe. Look at him. Is he smiling or is that me? Amazing creatures. One of God's most amazing creatures on this planet. Love these guys. Look for them every year. 
Now, the reason I'm such a fan of the cicada is because uh, they start off life the size of a grain of rice. Then they spend between 2 and 17 years underground, at which time they come up, they climb the tree, and they emerge from this ectoskeleton carcass into a winged insect. They hang on the tree overnight, dry off. They only live for about 6 weeks, but what's really cool is this cool carcass they leave behind. I remember as a kid seeing these thinking, what planet did they come from? Now, every time I see one maybe dead and in good condition, I pick it up and put it in my specimen pack, and I have a bunch of them, and I look at them, and you can see the interesting things, like look at the transparent wings, and uh, also look here, you can see the hairs, they're almost copper-colored, really interesting. Um, here again, you can see another uh, picture of the wings and their formation, and, and of course their eyes are very similar to normal insects. Now, another good reason for you to have a microscope is to check the edges on some of your edge tools. You know, here we have a couple knives that we did, and if you look under the microscope, you can see what kind of edge you put on there, whether you have a bevel, whether you have a rounded over. Here's a utility blade from a, a utility knife, and you can see, look at the edge on here. You can see the extreme bevel that they have on their edge on that blade. Uh, this is the knife that Abe sent over, and I purposely dulled this knife, if you remember, because I don't like it scary sharp in the field. And what's funny is when you look at it real close, you can see how I dulled it out. It looks almost like, you see that? Like a, a ledge on there. Imagine that. It looks like a butter knife, but it's actually pretty now, sharp. Here's something I always found interesting. You know on the back of a $5 bill, you know, that also has the Lincoln Memorial. Lincoln's on the front of the bill, too. But did you know up here along this row, there's states here? There's 26 states that are visible, and that's because that's how many are visible on the actual Lincoln Memorial. And when it was built, it was 48 states. So if you look around the whole building, all 48 states are represented. Now, I wonder maybe if uh, your state is one of these states that are represented on the, uh, on the back of the $5 bill and also on the Lincoln Memorial on the front. And here you can see Lincoln looking really good, sitting there in his chair watching over. Now, like I said, you can't imagine all the things that I look at under the microscope just to see the structures, how it's made. You'd be very surprised at what things look like up close. But uh, like I said, the price of microscopes have come down so much that uh, if you have children or if you just like interesting stuff, you really should get one. So in closing, the microscope that I use and the one that you're interested in is called the Stereo Dissecting Microscope. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Hope that helped. Take care now. Bye-bye.